Today's topic is Istio and tomorrow's topic will be the hands-on on Istio. So those who are watching this video, watch the video completely because I'll be teaching you the entire Istio architecture along with components, along with why this Istio is important in any kind of Kubernetes cluster along with the major advantages and disadvantages. So let's get started into this video, guys. So first of all, let's discuss about why this Istio is, is importantly added to the Kubernetes cluster. Let's go with that. So if you remember in the last class, I have told you that the, in the Kubernetes cluster, there is a master node and there is a worker node, right? And in the worker nodes, you have some pods and in the master node, you have some pods. And whenever there is a deployment, which is coming from the external environment to the Kubernetes cluster, right? The deployment goes to either of the worker node. Now let's assume that we are deploying one application of hello world okay listen carefully we are deploying an application of hello world and this master server has decided that hello world application should be deployed into the first worker node and now as usual the worker node gets the hello world application worker node one gets the hello world application now the entire structure is good because it's the single application we were able to deploy it properly now but in terms of project when we are designing the project when we are discussing about the project the project will have tens to 100 microservices in its repositories right which have to be deployed on the kubernetes cluster correct do you agree with me Let's say like I have a Walmart application and inside that Walmart application, I am under the supply chain pillar. Under the supply chain pillar, there is a transportation application. There is a fulfillment application. There is an item and inventory application. There is a purchase order application. And for these applications, there will be variety of variety of pods which are getting deployed onto Kubernetes cluster. Now with the one single pod, the networking concept was very easy as you have a service integrated in front of the pod. But what will happen when I have hundreds of pods which are deployed into the Kubernetes cluster and its entire networking has to be managed between the pods. Like one pod should talk with another pod. One pod should communicate with the other pod in the Kubernetes architecture. One worker node pod should talk with the another worker node. So there should be a person who is actually managing the networking inside the Kubernetes cluster at the same time, there should be a monitoring agent also who is taking care of the routing aspects. At the same time, there should be a component which is helping us to have the external world communication to the internal world communication. I hope you are understanding what I am talking about. At the same time, if you remember any application in this damn world, for example, www.heydevops.in is running on some certificates, right? Certificates, right? Do you agree with me? Where we have taken from GoDaddy, Hostinger, Amazon Certificate Manager, these all are platforms which are giving these certificates to the end users to make their website secure at the same time layer seven security is added correct now what is layer seven layer seven is basically your https protocol hypertext transfer protocol in a secure way and layer four traffic is basically your http traffic by adding the additional functionality to a person who can give me a security at the same time, he can give me the certificates. At the same time, he can give me the layer seven security to my application. So what are the key benefits of the person getting introduced into the architecture who can manage my hundreds and hundreds of pods networking? So the first one is networking inside the cluster is managed. Monitoring of the entire networking is managed. External to internal communication is taken care. At the same time, the security and the layer seven certificate aspect is given to my Kubernetes cluster. So that is the primary reason anyone who is using the Kubernetes cluster are primarily using your Istio as a service mesh. 
Now let's talk about what is service mesh, guys. What is a mesh? Now, if you see any honeycomb, what will happen in general in the honeycomb? You will have hexagonal patterns, right? So it, it is forming a combination of multiple hexagonal parameters to be combined together, which gives the additional layer of strength. In the same way, the service mesh is nothing but all the pods which are communicating with the service, right? Service is important, right? I've told you in the day one, you need to understand that every pod talks with a service in front of it. So service mesh is nothing but the connection of all the services of pods in a mesh format, right? I hope you are able to understand all the combination of the pods in the mesh format, right? Is called your service mesh. All the services of the pods which are connected to this particular component. Service mesh is nothing but it will act on the entire Kubernetes cluster as it will form a networking component. Now let's discuss about the older structure of Kubernetes cluster. If you see here, very simple, this is a Kubernetes cluster where a node A and node B is there. And if you, if you see, I have two pods running. This is pod P1, this is pod P2, okay? And the pod P1 and P2 are of, okay, sorry, my bad. Instant, instance one is pod P1 and instance two is pod P2. And if you see here, this is the worker node one and worker node two. And here the combination of instance one and instance two, right? So what you are trying to say is for one service, right? There are two pods which are connected with a single service and the communication is happening like this. And for a service B, the pods are connected like this. It means that the Kubernetes decides wherever it wants to deploy its pod. The pod P1 went to the node A, the pod P2 went to the node B. Now the service is, is connecting the both the pods so that the traffic management can be taken care. But do you think that, let's say like I have pod three in the another node, right? There is a node three, I have the pod three. How does the service will be routing the traffic? So it will form a layer like this. So let's say like I have 100 pods like this. I have scaled my architecture to 100 pods. So the service management, the traffic management here becomes a biggest disadvantage and burden to the team. In order to manage this, this was the first challenge which I wanted to explain you. The management of the traffic between the pods which are deployed in various nodes becomes very difficult. Now, some of the other challenges, let's see one by one. Challenges of microservices in cloud and Kubernetes environment. As I have told you, as you go ahead and deploy your multiple microservices, the traffic management will become difficult. Developers toil to create security policies to their application. One of the important aspects, let me tell you this, you have a pod. Okay, and there is a service in front of pod. Now, what will happen is whenever there is a traffic routing between the pod to service and service, pod to service and service to the pod. Now, you need to understand there is a security layer which needs to be added, right? My data should be secured among the transfer of data between the service pod, service to the external world, external world to the service. So, entire network traffic right? Management should happen with a security layer. Now what happens, right? Suppose Istio is not there. So what usually developers will do is they will have their security layers to be added in the application or usually the security layer is added on top of the Kubernetes cluster, right? So in order to overcome this, the Istio also helps you to give or create the security policies here network management it does right it does the security policies management now one important thing no central point to secure multi-cloud and multi-cluster applications now here if you understand let's say like i have a pod and service like that i have 100 pods and 100 service there is no central point to secure all the traffic together or i can monitor 
Now, Istio gives a monitoring platform also. Basically, I can monitor my entire system's data. Traffic management of microservices play pain in cloud team and struggle to monitor the applications. As I have told you, we want to monitor how the traffic management is happening. We want to monitor how the data transfer is happening between the service to pod or any kind of outside network to inside network. Now, here comes the few add-on things. To overcome all the challenges which I have told you, monitoring, security, network management, traffic management, processing of the traffic, all those things are done by one and only one solution that is your Istio. Now, if you see, once the Istio has come into picture, right? Let's say like Istio has come into picture. Now, if you see this diagram, we have a node A, we have a node B, and this is the Kubernetes cluster. And if you see here, there is some red component which have been added to the system, right? So now let me tell you what is this. Now what happens, right? Whenever to a Kubernetes cluster, if you have added or integrated the Istio, which we will see in the tomorrow's class, that software will give a network management capability to the Kubernetes cluster at the same time, it will assign the proxy containers or you can call like a sidecars. Now, let me tell you what will happen. So for example, here in this diagram, I have a worker node, okay? I have worker node one and worker node two. And on top of this Kubernetes cluster, I have set up my Istio service mesh. Now, what will happen? Whenever a new pod is deployed into the Kubernetes cluster, this new pod will have a sidecar associated with it, okay? This sidecar in the Kubernetes term, right? This sidecar in the Kubernetes term is called as proxy management container or proxy container simply or proxy related pod. Now, what is sidecar in the Kubernetes? So whenever a pod is coming up in order to support the pod, either with network management, either with traffic management, either with certificates management, either with processing of the incoming and outgoing request or the network traffic management, this proxy pod or proxy sidecar container is very helpful for the actual pod to spin up. So that is the reason you would be able to understand in the single pod, you see here in the single pod, there are one more container added and that container is nothing but your sidecar container. This container, once you install the Istio, will have the network management, traffic management, processing of the traffic, uh, how the traffic should flow inside the pod and outside the pod, all the things will be taken care of by this sidecar. Now you understood, right? What is this sidecar container? And in general terms, this is also called as Envoy, okay? In Istio, I'll be telling you, so basically you can consider like a Envoy. Envoy is nothing but which manages the proxy related things of a, of a pod proxy related things of pod, which the Kubernetes gives. Okay. Now let's see one important thing. Now let's see like you have a Kubernetes cluster A, Kubernetes cluster, sorry, node A, node B, and you have a Kubernetes cluster. Now the same setup, which you got as a disadvantage. Now here the advantage is that every pod inside the Kubernetes cluster has an envoy container attached to the pod. It means that it has a proxy container attached to the pod. And now the traffic management, the network management, the processing of the data, the monitoring of the system is entirely controlled by the proxy containers inside the pod. And one biggest advantage in order to use the Istio is that you can have multiple gateways created. Now, in general, if you see, I'll tell you, the Istio usually has a gateway and a virtual service 
So what does this mean? What is Istio? What is Gateway? What is virtual services? Basically, it is acting as a traffic management for your pod. Suppose you create a gateway, kind gateway. You create a kind as virtual service. So basically, the gateway is the entry point. Okay, so the gateway will manage where the traffic should go. Suppose I say here star, the traffic from the gateway should be redirected to all the pods which are attached with this gateway. Now, if you see, once the gateway is created, the gateway is attached to the virtual service. Now, this virtual service tells what are my backend services. It's like similar like a load balancer, which is having the target and what type of targets are there, EC2 instances or S3 buckets, or you can consider like EKS cluster. Same way, this gateway has a virtual service attached to it. And this virtual service will have various kinds of versions of pods with it. Now, whenever the traffic comes inside the gateway, the gateway sends the traffic to the virtual service because these two are interlinked with each other. And the virtual service on the basis of round robin percentage, how much traffic should, should be routed to V1, how much traffic should be routed to V2 is given by this virtual service. Now in the tomorrow's hands-on, what you will be able to see, you will be able to see a Kubernetes cluster where we'll be deploying the Istio in it and we will be visualizing some containers, how the traffic is managed. We'll be creating some gateways, we'll be creating some virtual service and we'll be seeing how this traffic is managed between these two pods. Now we have discussed so many things. Now, one important thing I have to tell you, what is the architecture of Istio, right? Now you can see here, once the Istio is deployed on any Kubernetes cluster, you'll be able to see there is a control plane, there is a data plane, right? And this data plane helps in organizing the proxy containers or NY with respect to the services, okay? So these are attached with the services and these are basically your containers which are helping the traffic management or the network management of the containers. Okay. These NOI sidecars, this NOI sidecars will help in the discovery, configuration and certificates. Now all of you see here, this control plane has three components here. Once you install, there will be Istioid, which has three components, Pilot, Citadel and Galley. Now what are this? The Pilot is the primary driver of the Istio, which helps in the network management of the cluster. Okay. This all proxy related things. Network management is managed by your pilot. The Citadel manages the certificates of each and every pod inside the Kubernetes system. The galley helps in processing the network traffic. So I hope you have understood, but let me write down. The pilot processes the network management. It The Citadel helps with the certificates on the Kubernetes cluster, whatever the services are having the certificates, it will manage that. And the galley processes the network traffic between the pods, right? So once you have seen this, let's talk about the gateway structure, right? So this is the network component. This is Istio, this is Kubernetes cluster. And the beauty here is, any virtual machine which have your services and pods, services and pods available, they can have or any kind of your virtual machine which has a service, which is having a pod, you have your service. This virtual machines can also interact with your Kubernetes cluster. So this is your Kubernetes cluster. If you are able to see, this is your Kubernetes cluster. In the Kubernetes cluster, you have installed the Istio and this gateway I have told you, right? Gateway is nothing but like a load balancer. And behind that load balancer, you will have your targets. And the targets can be your VMs, EC2 instances, EKS. So similarly, you have your EKS cluster one side and you have your virtual machines on another side. And this gateway is helping you to connect between both of them. And it is also giving the envoys to your services. Okay. I hope that you have liked this video. Any questions, any queries with respect to all the things that we have discussed, make sure that you are giving the comment to me and I'll be replying to your comment, right? And uh, one important thing, tomorrow we are going to do the hands-on on the same things, whatever we have discussed. So please like the video and share the channel link with your friends. I hope that this video will help you and understand the Istio setup in Kubernetes. There are many, many things which we will be covering in the coming classes. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned. 
day five, day six videos will be awesome. We'll be doing some hands-on and uh, let's see in the next classes. Thank you. Bye.